double duty topic on this uh, video here. Uh, first topic we're going to cover is underwatering. So I get a lot of questions about watering, whether to hand water, whether to use an irrigation system, whether to underwater. And to be honest, it's hard to give a straight answer because all uh, watering methods can actually be quite applicable. So in general, just taking a quick look here, we do um, hand watering for everything. The reason we do that in this setting is because the overspray would end up getting onto the floor and significantly raising humidity levels. So in general, we hand water to have a lot of control. With the radish, which is the crop you see here, uh, if you've grown radish, you know that it actually absorbs and holds on to moisture really, really well. So if you're watering from above, um, especially right before harvest, it's very difficult to get a dry crop. So a couple days, so today is Sunday and we're going to harvest on Tuesday. So today's the day that we give these a really, really good underwatering. So I'm going to leave these in these trays here, which are simple like um, foot or shoe storage trays from Home Depot for a couple bucks each. And they're the perfect size for a tray here. And what we do is we leave them in here basically until they've absorbed all the water. And I do, I lift each tray to just make sure it feels nice and heavy. So this is our method of making sure when we go to harvest the radish, we've got a very, very dry crop. So underwatering is a great technique uh, if you really, really want to keep your crop dry. And this allows us to cut it and package it without having to go through a wash and spin cycle. So the other thing I want to show you is the importance of light. So I'm going to come around here. You can probably already see the difference between the front of these trays here and the back of these trays. So it's uh, mid-November here in uh, Vancouver. I'm just going to show you our setup here again. So this here is south facing. So we actually get a lot of natural light in here. But because it's Vancouver, it's very gray in the winter, so we have supplementary lights. So our supplementary lights, as you can see, can cast a bit of a shadow. So I'm just going to show you here our radish there. So the back of our radish there have a bit of a shadow, a significant shadow actually. And you can see, as we get in there, maybe you can, it's a little tricky here, but there you go. Like those back uh, uh, shoots there, they're reaching a bit, they're not opened as much. Uh, they're a little light starved. And you can see that better here because these ones uh, are more in the light on this side. You can see the ones in the back haven't quite opened up as much, so they're a little behind. So it seems like a bit of a problem, but in fact, what we're going to do after we finish soaking these is we're going to take this end here, which was the front, and we're just going to turn the tray around. So this end here is now facing the, the lights on the inside. And we find by rotating the trays once a day that they actually will correct themselves and you're not able to tell which end was which during the whole process. So it's, it's a way of dealing with the limitation in our system. In order to make the best use of our space here, um, our shelving creates a bit of a shadow. And while it could be seen as detrimental because of that shading, the rotating of the trays actually eliminates that issue. Now another way to cope with this is you see our lights are in the center of the container here. Now if we were to offset lights over to here, lights over here, so they would come down and shine this way, like this, we could probably eliminate some of that. Uh, with these types of lights here, putting them directly over the crop would probably be too intense. So we're pretty happy with our system. But if you were going to go with a fluorescent or LED light, you might want to put strips along each side there so you're getting that angle there. The reason we use these metal halide lights is because they give off a lot of heat as well. And so when we're using the lights, it's because there's a lack of sun and we need the heat. So they're doing double duty. And you know, 90% of the energy that goes into these lights is going into heat anyway. So. so there you go, a little bit on watering and a little bit about the importance of light and how to deal with a uh, uh, lack of light in some situations without any uh, very, very little compromise in uh, crop quality.